This video is for anyone studying William Blake's Songs of Innocence and of Experience. If you've ever been to the English countryside, you've probably seen an English village, with a village green in its centre. However, when William Blake was born in 1757, these were far more common than they are today. In the years since his birth, many of these villages got absorbed into growing urban sprawl. And the people living in these villages moved to the big cities or to the factories that sprung up with the Industrial Revolution. Between 1700 and 1830, the English population living in cities of more than 5,000 people rose from 15% to 34%. Between 1700 and 1830, the population of London rose from 550,000 inhabitants to 1.5 million. By 1851, just 14 years after Blake's death, this had risen to 2.4 million inhabitants. Between Blake's childhood and his adulthood, therefore, he witnessed an unprecedented social change in England, one that he wasn't entirely comfortable with. This poem, The Echoing Green, I think reflects his discomfort with the Industrial Revolution and his trepidation and concern about the social changes happening in England around him. It is, however, found in the Songs of Innocence section of the anthology. Even though it's found in the Songs of Innocence, where the reader is supposed to get a picture of joy and innocence, I think it doesn't give the reader a picture of pure innocence, and I'll talk about that later. Structurally, the poem goes through the day, beginning in the morning when the sun does arise, and ending in the evening when the sun does descend. In the first stanza, we're given a sensory description of a cacophony of sound that's heard in the village in the morning. In this soundscape, the birds sing along to the human-made sound of ringing bells. Thus, Blake sets up a scene where people and nature are living in harmony with one another. Birds are used again in the final stanza. The children returning home are described using the simile, like birds in their nest. It's up to you to decide what this imagery means to you. Is the image of baby birds in a nest one of safety? of hiding, of sadness, of happiness, melancholy, or something else. In the middle stanza, Blake describes the older generation's joy at watching young children play in the same way as they did. Why do you think Blake uses this in this narrative or in this description? In my opinion, it's to highlight the joy of continuity in human life and in communities. It's comforting and affirming to know that people of different ages can experience joy alongside one another and that people will experience joy in the same way down the ages. I think Blake is using this image to lament the destruction of these communities as he sees it. He thinks that this time when the older generation will experience joy alongside the younger generation and that life will continue in a in a similar fashion down the generations is coming to an end. And I think he's sad about that. In terms of language, Blake has chosen to write this in the present tense. They laugh at our play, our sports have an end. Normally a narrative is written in the past tense. So it's interesting perhaps to speculate on why he's chosen the more immediate and continuous present tense. And this is something that you can apply to the rest of the anthology as well. He uses present, present tense quite a lot. He also chooses the first person plural, our. He includes himself, but also the reader in this description of this scene. And it's up to you to think about why he does that. In terms of comparisons to other poems in the collection, I think this poem pairs nicely with the nurse's song at the end of which she takes the little ones to bed, listening to the sounds of the echoing hills around her. In terms of tone, how does the poem end? The young ones can no longer be merry. Is it taking it too far to suggest that this is linked to, linked to Blake's discomfort with the social changes and the industrial revolution that he's witnessing? Is he hinting that too many children in his eyes are not allowed to have fun or to play anymore in this industrial revolution Victorian Britain? 
Is he referring to the impact the Industrial Revolution is having on family, family ties and family values? Or is this a true song of innocence and Blake isn't trying to hint at anything dark at all? That's up to you. In the last line, the darkening green, is this ominous, implying that something bad is going to happen? Or is it melancholy? Or is the reader supposed to be happy in the knowledge that the day will start again in the same way tomorrow? And is the reader supposed to be comforted by the cyclical certainty of village life? Thank you as always for listening and do subscribe and do comment with your questions um, and any comments you have on what I've said. Thank you.